the PlayStation Classic. Is it worth it this May months later? I'll give you my opinion here in just a minute. What's up guys, Crooked from Remod Entertainment here. I am here today to give you my opinion on the PlayStation Classic going on four months later, released in December. Um, so I think it's totally worth it. I picked one up for GameStop for right around 60 bucks, maybe less with points and stuff, but uh, with the way the modding community has come with it, I totally think it's worth it. But let's start with where Sony kind of screwed up with the Classic. Uh, they had a very short list of preloaded games on it. The only games you could get were like Battle Arena Toshiden, Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy 7, Grand Theft Auto, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, Mr. Driller, Odd Worlds, Abe's Odyssey, Rayman, Resident Evil Director's Cut, uh, Revelations Persona, Ridge Racer Type 4, uh, Super Puzzle Fire 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, and, and Wild Arms. Those were the games it came with. Now, thanks to the people over at Mob My Classic, you can load RetroArch and Bleemsync onto the PlayStation Classic via a sideload method and a USB stick, adding a ton of games to this system. I added just right around 30 or 40 more games that I personally wanted to see, uh, one of which... We're out the gate just thinking, you know, Star Ocean. Uh, let's see. There's ah, there's so many. I have to go through the list here. Hang on one second. Let me look up on my classic. So we have Star Ocean. We have Medieval. We have Legend of Lagaya. We have all the Jet Moto. Uh, there's other Final Fantasy games other than 7, like 8 and 9. Uh, let's see. Dino Crisis, Digimon World. There's, there's all kinds of games for the classic that are totally worth putting on there that they just didn't. The other part that they screwed up on is using an open source emulator to run the classic. This is what made jailbreaking it so easy. The early jailbreaks were kind of weird and wonky, but they still worked. You could still load games, you just couldn't use the original 25, which was fine. Uh, when a few of the original games came with it, we're running at 50 hertz instead of 60 hertz. So what that does is it looks laggy, like tech almost unplayable to me at 50 hertz because of the input lag and the, the video lag. Now, people figured out by plugging in a USB keyboard and hitting a few buttons, you could pull up the emulator menu and change the region from PAL to NTSC and give you a 60 hertz refresh rate, improving the performance a ton. Like, a ton. It's ridiculous, the difference. So, the only other thing they really screwed up on was the $100 price tag. Uh, I don't think for what we got when it launched, it's worth the $100. I don't even think I would really pay the 60 it is right now um, if it just had the original 25 and it wasn't moddable. It would just wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense to me. But with Mod My Classic and Blame Sync and RetroArch and able to play PSP games, NES games, Super Nintendo games, all the retro games that are available, uh, someone even has a Dreamcast core for RetroArch that can play Dreamcast games on this system. Now, it's not perfect, but it works very well so far. Uh, that's one way, instead of having to buy the pound HDMI for your Dreamcast, you can play Dreamcast games on your Classic. It It's kind of awesome. So... That's my honest opinion. Um, I'm going to leave a link to Mob My Classic, um, our Discord, our Twitch channels and stuff all in the description below. Just make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Take it easy.